Hello everybody, my name is Brent Johnson and I'm with Heartfeel Automation. Last week we talked a little bit about how to set up a new program in Automation Studio 4.9. This week I'm going to talk about how we set up, set up the connection and communications with this controller right here. We're using the Compact Desk Controller from BNR. In order to do so, first we need to make sure we can wire this up properly to, in order to make sure it's powered up. And then also we need to make sure it's connected with our computer. In order to find the proper wire ins wiring instructions, the best place is to go on to BNR's website. So let's go ahead and open up a browser and type in brautomation.com. Now, as you recall from last week, there were several options that you needed to have when you buy a controller. One of those options is the power supply module, and that's the part we want to look up because that's how we're going to physically wire this thing up. So the power supply module that we, we bought with this controller is the X20 PS9600. So go ahead into the search bar in the top here and type that in. X20 PS9600. Then go ahead and click on the product page. This is the page that we had talked about last week and click on downloads. Then go ahead and click the data sheet. I'm gonna download the English version. And then you can scroll down to how to wire this up. Now I'm using a single power supply. There is a way to have two different isolated power supplies. That's if you want to have an e-stop in there and you want to not be able to fire inputs and outputs, but you do want to keep the CPU running. For today, we're just going to do a, a single power supply. So note that the blue, red, and black lines are all internal connections. The jumper cable, that's something that we have to physically do. So notice right here, I put a jumper cable between these two pins and that correlates with what we have here in the diagram. Those two pins need to be jumper together. Then I have my plus 24 volts going to this pin right down here, which correlates with the diagram right there. And my ground pin is the black cable that goes to the bottom pin right there. These are cage clamp connectors. So all you have to do is push down with a screwdriver and then you put your wire in it while you're holding it down, then let go, and it makes a really good connection on there. It's a nice feature of these terminal blocks. All right, so once we've got it wired up, we need to make sure we have our Ethernet cord plugged in into the lower Ethernet port that's interface two. That's our standard Ethernet port. This top port is our power link port. We're not doing motion control, so we don't need to worry about that today. So plug it in the bottom port, and then go ahead and plug the other end into your PC. Once you get all that stuff wired up, plug her in and make sure it starts properly. Notice when I plug it in, you're gonna start to see some blinking lights. That means we powered it up properly and we didn't blow it up. If it blew up, you'd know you blew it up because lots of smoke and stuff would start happening. So that's a good thing. We gotta power it up. Now let's go ahead and open up our Automation Studio project so we can set the IP address of this guy. Prior to setting our IP address, I want to show you that we need to make sure we know what our IP address is of our PC. So the best way to do that is to go to the Network and Sharing Center. I'm running Windows 10. Go ahead and click on Network and Internet. Click on Change Adapter Options. Click on Ethernet because we're, we're physically connected to our Ethernet port on our laptop or our computer. Then go ahead and click Properties. Then go down here and click on Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4. Double click on that. Notice that you'll see our current IP address is 192.168.0.250 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. It's very important that our IP address that we set for this controller right here is very close to this. These three digits need to be exactly the same, and then this last digit, 250, needs to be slightly different for the controller. The subnet mask also has to be exactly the same. So make sure you memorize this IP address right here. Go ahead and click OK. OK, close out of here. Next, open up your Automation Studio project. Now it's gonna load the project that we created last week. So just make, make sure that you're opening up my new project or whatever you name that project is. All right, as you can see, 
I've got my new project loaded up here. I'm already communicating with my controller because I've opened this up in the past. With yours, if it's a brand new controller, you're gonna see a yellow exclamation mark right here. And it's gonna have a bunch of zeros under the IP address and the subnet. That means we have to go ahead and change this. Even though I'm communicating, I'll show you how you do those steps. So go ahead and right click on this. Or actually what you're gonna see is you're gonna have this. It's gonna be blank. Or it might show it might show a picture of your controller. Go to online, click on settings, and then it's gonna open up this page that we were just looking at. Go ahead and click on the X20CP0484, right click on it, click set IP parameters. Go ahead and what you're gonna see for the default is it's gonna be set as get IP address from DHCP server. We wanna go ahead and click on enter IP address manually. So go ahead, make sure you enter the IP address to, so it's the same as the IP address on your on your PC other than this last digit. So my I have it set as 192.168.0.10. The subnet is 255.255.255.0. So it's very similar except for that last digit. I'm good to go. Make sure I check this box right here that says apply all I, apply IP parameters to the X20 CP0484 IF2 Ethernet port. So check that box. It's very important to check it. Go ahead and click OK. Now we need to take this and drag it into this window here. So just left click on it and hold it down and drag it over here. Next, make sure you check this box and then you can go ahead. I like to save, just save your changes. Now go ahead and hit connect. Notice now that I'm connected right down here, you can see the green run sign. That means I'm communicating with this controller. We can also make sure that we're connect, con, uh, connected properly by looking at the configuration view of this. So close out of this, go into your physical view, go click on ethernet, right click on ethernet, click on configuration, and you can see right here, the IP address and the subnet are exactly what we changed it to. This is a great way to make sure that all the changes were set on this controller. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Next week, we're gonna make a basic ladder logic program and we're gonna, I'll show you how to do that. Have a great weekend and stay, stay safe.